248. Sports and Culture. Calcedon Reports No. 355, February 1995. Games and sports are probably as old as mankind. We are familiar with the Greek Olympics of antiquity and the savage games in the Roman arena. In Homer, we meet with games at the funeral of Patroclus, and it is clear from this and other pagan examples of games that they were connected with religion. The religious meanings varied from one culture to another. In Greece, the athletes had to be free of civil or religious stains on their character to compete. The Roman games were connected with human sacrifice. The Christians very early opposed them and brought about their end. The Roman example left a long, lingering hostility among Christians. Since the fall of Rome, this Christian hostility has lingered. It has not been helped by the brutal sports once commonplace, involving cruelty to animals. Some present-day sports are often managed by heartless men and also involve serious injuries. Both Larry Cuban and Ford Schwartz have spoken to me of problems with respect to football. We now have also a liberal, non-Christian hostility to sports. I recall vividly my shock in 1952 on hearing a prominent liberal, a woman, speak of the horror of the, quote, traumatic, end quote, effect of baseball on boys because of its highly competitive character and its, quote, capitalistic, end quote, emphasis on success. My immediate reaction was this. She wants the games to allow four strikes to batters, not three. Later, I realised that a hundred strikes would not satisfy her. Baseball was too individualistic and too results-oriented for her tastes. The old Christian hostility has been replaced by a humanistic one. Meanwhile, an ironic fact is that nowhere outside of Christendom has a like interest in development of sports ever occurred. Spectator sports have an extensive history in Roman culture, but the very great popular participation is a remarkable fact, and very much a part of our world. Remember that persons of note, such as John Calvin, have taken a delight in games and sports. A key facet of games in our culture has been a delight in life. It is impossible to imagine the ancient Stoics or the Neoplatonists enjoying sports. The Stoics took no pleasure in life. The Neoplatonists regarded the material world as beneath the dignity of intelligent man's concern. Christendom has become the centre of games and sports, but Christians sometimes have problems explaining their interest. But a delight in life expresses itself in a variety of ways, in the joys of marital and family life, and in the exuberance of happy songs. Much Christian music is joyful and triumphant, and it is sad that some play and sing it in funeral tones. Christians are a laughter-filled people, a happy people who know that they have a victory in time and in eternity. I recall, when I was a boy, that some of us would at times run or race simply out of an exuberant joy. I have listened to girls talk and giggle, alive and happy. Ours is a theology of joy, and it is reflected in every area of life and culture. The use of such words as joy, joyful, glad, gladness and related terms abound in the Bible because ours is a faith with victory and we are a people with an eternal security. Such a faith will manifest itself in every area of life.